Hey everybody, this is example number seven for structural dynamics for damp-free vibrations. The problem statement that we have is a single degree of freedom system shown below has the following characteristics. The weight of the mass is equal to two kips. The spring stiffness is equal to two kips per inch. The coefficient of friction is equal to 0 0.15. And the mass has an initial displacement of four inches and an initial velocity of zero inches per second. And we need to find the vibration displacement amplitude after four cycles and the number of cycles of motion needed for the mass to come to rest. So here's our figure. And this is an example. This example is, covers Coulomb or dry friction damping, because that's the type of damping that we have is due to the friction between the mass and the surface that it sits on. Before we proceed with the solution, I just want to let you guys know that, that this example is brought to you by Bentley. And Bentley Systems is a software development company that supports the professional needs of engineers, designers, planners, and contractors responsible for creating and managing infrastructure. Bentley has tailored software applications for design, modeling, and analysis of buildings, structures, bridges, plants, and more. I have used Bentley's software and I can say that the software was very easy to use and the support that came with it was impeccable. Whenever I needed help, the Bentley team was there for me. And here's their website, it's Bentley.com. There's a link to Bentley.com and some of their YouTube channels within the description part of this video. So if you're a student and want to get familiar with the software and get a leg up over your colleagues during your job search, academic licensing is available through Bentley. And if you're a practicing engineer and you want to sharpen up your skills, they have a bunch of videos and webinars on their website as well as their various YouTube channels. So please check them out. And now coming back to our damp free vibration problem, the first step we need to do is calculate the Coulomb, uh, the Coulomb friction force and that's equal to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force on the contact surface. So our coefficient of friction is equal to 0 0.15 and the, normal, and the normal force on the contact surface is simply equal to uh, the weight of the mass which is W and that's two kips. So our Coulomb friction force is equal to 300 pounds Next, we need to calculate the mass, uh, the mass, and that's equal to the weight divided by the gravitational acceleration, and so that's going to be that's going to be equal to 2,000 pounds divided by 386.4 inches per second squared. So the mass is equal to 5.176 pounds second squared per inch. After this, we can calculate the circular natural frequency, and that's equal to the square root of the stiffness divided by the mass. So that comes out to be 19.657 radians per second. Then we can calculate the natural period, which is equal to 2 pi divided by the circular natural frequency omega. So it's 2 pi divided by 19.657 radians per second. So our natural period is equal to 0 0.32 seconds. Now we can calculate the vibration displacement amplitude. And we need to calculate it after four cycles. So the relationship we're going to use is that this vibration amplitude is equal to the initial displacement minus 4 times the number of cycles multiplied by the Coulomb friction force, divided by the stiffness, spring stiffness. So we just plug in the numbers, and so the initial displacement is equal to 4 inches minus 4 times n, the number of cycles, so we're interested in 4 cycles, times the Coulomb friction force of 300 pounds, divided by the stiffness, spring stiffness k of 2,000 pounds per inch. So the vibration displacement amplitude after four cycles is going to be equal to 1.6 inches. And lastly, we can calculate the number of cycles till the motion stops. So the motion will end at some amplitude when the restoring force in the spring cannot overcome the frictional damping force. So the restoring force in the spring is going to be equal to K, the spring stiffness, times uh, some amplitude, x sub n we call it, and then we set that equal, less than or equal to the frictional, uh, the frictional damping force. 
So we take this, we simplify this uh, inequality even further, k, and then x sub n from the previous step we know is equal to the initial displacement minus 4 times the number of cycles times the frictional damping force divided by k. So this whole thing is x sub n, and we use this uh, to calculate the vibration displacement amplitude. It's this over here. So go, going back, uh, so now we have, so we simplified this even further, and less than or equal to the frictional damping force. So what we need to solve for is n. So we rearrange this equation, and I'm not going through all the steps of the rearranging the equa equation, the inequality, but we rearrange it, and then we try to get the number of cycles on the left-hand side, because that's what we're solving for. We need to find the number of cycles. And so it comes out to be n less than or equal to 1 over 4 times negative 1 plus the stiffness times the initial displacement divided by the frictional, uh, the Coulomb friction damping force. So we just plug in the numbers, and we find that the number of cycles is equal to 6.42 cycles. So after 6.42 cycles, uh, the mass will come to a complete stop. And so this is the end of this example. Please subscribe to the channel, like the Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash engineeringexamples. And please also visit the website. It's engineeringexamples.net where you can sign up for our email list and stay up to date on the latest uh, content that we're producing. See you guys in the next video. Thanks.